Grace and peace be yours from God our Sovereign and from our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ and from the Holy Spirit. Amen. One day Gabriel and God were out walking through the heavens and they stopped and they looked and gazed down upon the earth and observed the mess of the world in all of a humankind's behavior. And Gabriel turns and says to God, Lord, you have to do something about that mess down there. To which God replies, I did. I became human to show them the way. And Gabriel looks down again and he says, Well, Lord, your plan's not working. It's time to go with plan B. To which God responds, There is no plan B. There's only plan A. God's plan, God's desire is to be in relationship with us and through us bring life and salvation to the whole world. God's plan is to enlist you and me and others as God's agents of transformation for this world. This epiphany season, we have been focusing on that call from God to be in partnership with God in the redemption of this world. We have said that the basis of our call is God's own desire to be in relationship with us, to be our God, and for us to be God's people on earth, through whom all the rest of the world would be blessed. And we are reminded by the Apostle Paul that we are not called because we are better than others. Rather, we are called so that others might be blessed through us. It's not that we are better or more powerful, nor more deserving than others. It is simply the fact that we have been chosen by God for a mission. In fact, Paul would remind us about our being called that not many of you were wise by human standards, not many were powerful, not many were of noble birth, but God chose what is foolish in the world to shame the wise, and God chose what is weak in the world to shame the strong. And God chose what is low and despised in the world, things that are not, to reduce to nothing things that are. That ought to keep us walking humbly. We are called to offer to the world an alternative way of living, an alternative way of seeing, a different way of being. We are called to be agents of the way of God and not of the way of the world. We have said that we are called to be disciples, and our call is to follow the way of Jesus. This Jesus who says to us, if anyone 
want to become my disciple, let them deny themselves, take up their cross, and follow me. Discipleship then seems to be a act of two steps. First, that of dying to self, of emptying oneself for the sake of the other, of picking up one's cross and following Jesus in the way of the cross. And then once we have died to self, comes the second step, because we are then buried with Christ. So just as Jesus was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we also might be raised up to walk in newness of life. That is, having been buried with Christ, having died to self, God now raises us up and empowers us to be agents of transformation in the world. We have said that that discipleship, that being an agent of transformation, that we are called to do justice and to love kindness, to walk humbly with our God. And then we come to today's Gospel text, a text in which Jesus says that we are called to be salt and light. And then at the conclusion of those words of Jesus, He goes on to say to us, For I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. The difference between the scribes and Pharisees and that of Jesus is that the scribes and Pharisees saw the way of God as being something that came from the top down, as being a list of rules and regulations which they kept. The Pharisees would look at those rules and regulations and would say, keep these and you will find God's favor. While Jesus saw the way of God as being a way of loving and serving all of God's creation, emptying yourself and taking the form of a servant and you will find yourself standing within the kingdom of God. The way of the Pharisees is imposed from the top down, but the way of Jesus was experienced by others as something that was contagious and infectious, coming from the bottom up. It was a way of life based upon loving and serving all. Today, Jesus adds to the metaphors that he uses for our being the people of the way. He says, you shall be the salt of the earth and the light of the world. A little later in the gospel, Jesus will add a third metaphor, that of yeast, saying the kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed in with three measures of flour until all of it was leavened. And a little later Jesus will add a fourth metaphor, that of the mustard seed, saying the kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that someone took and sowed in his field. What strikes me every time I consider these metaphors of Jesus regarding the kingdom of God, every time I reflect about being salt and light and yeast and seed, I am constantly amazed at how tiny they are in comparison with the powers and principalities and the rulers of this world. How inconsequential they seem when placed next to the might and the wealth of the world around us. 
how ineffectual we might seem to be. All of them so tiny, almost as if to be invisible. But it is a reminder to us that it is not us who transform the world, rather it is the power of God working in us and through us that brings about the kingdom. God acts, but God acts through human agency. So our call is to be lights and salt and yeast and seed, those tiny, insignificant, inconsequential little items that God will work through. And having called us to be salt, he then reminds us that salt that loses its saltiness is no longer good for anything. And having called us to be light, he reminds us that no one takes their light and hides it under a bushel, but rather places it on a lampstand so that the whole house is illuminated. <clears throat> the point being that when you and I fail to be what God has called us to be, we frustrate God's plan for the redemption of the world. God's desire is to collaborate with us and through us in the salvation of this world. But God will not intervene from on high like some kind of master puppeteer. He chooses to work through human agency. And he has called us as his chosen vessels. That is, God acts in us and through us, and when we fail, God fails. And the world continues to walk in darkness. This business of being salt and light and yeast and seed, this business of being agents of transformation, may seem to be an overwhelming task to us. This standing up to the world and the powers and principalities and its present rulers and becoming God's alternative might seem like an impossibility. These agents are so small, so tiny. What are they? against the arsenals of world powers, against violence, against greed and avarice, against hatred and prejudice. But isn't that just the point? It's not our power that transforms the world, but the power of God within us that allows us to be those transforming agents in the world. And this is why, having called us to be light, Jesus says to us, let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. This business of being called to be disciples, to do justice, to be light and salt, can seem like it's an overwhelming and impossible task. And it is, as long as we seek to stay in control, as long as we seek to save our life, and through our own power and might, redeem the world. When we seek to save our life, we lose it. But when we give it up, when we yield to God's call, 
when we surrender to God's invitation to be ourselves transformed, when we die to self and pick up our cross for the sake of following the way of Jesus, then, and only then, Jesus has a final word to speak to us. A word that says, come to me, all of you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. <coughs> Paradise of the gospel. My yoke is easy, and my burden is light. So Jesus calls and invites us to let go and let God reign in your life. Amen.